The second method, and we're going up in terms of sophistication here, right? The second method is called a check sum, all right? As the name implies, it has to do with addition, okay? Um, this parity check is really just about counting, odd or even, right? So you're just checking up ones and zeros. But the check sum requires a little more calculating power, a little more processing power, okay? So how does it work? Uh, let's, let's have a new message, okay? So suppose I want to send you some actual text, right? And um, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So suppose I'm going to send you a coded message like so. Um, 25, 11, 12, 7, 13, 4. Okay, so all of these correspond to letters. I don't know what they correspond to. But this is the message I want to send. Okay. Now just as before, suppose you and me are communicating on a network. And we agree, okay, we're going to use a parity check. But furthermore, you have to agree on what kind of parity check. It could be odd could be even, and that kind of, kind of changes things, right? Um, you'll expect that all of my messages which are right are wrong if we disagree on what kind of parity check we're using. So in the same way, what we have to agree on for the checksum is a number by which we divide by, okay? So I don't just pick between odd or even, I'm going to pick a number size, okay? So for instance, let's pick a number size like, say, 16. I just pick 16 because it's a power of 2, all right? So what's the relevance of this? How does it work? Well. A checksum, first I've got to take the sum of all of these numbers. Okay? So when I take the sum, okay, what I get is, uh, what do I get? <laughs> I get 36, 48, 55, 68, 72. Is that okay? So you've calculated this. You're about to send this to me. So first you take the sum. Okay? The next thing you do is you look at the number that we agreed upon and you divide your sum by this. Okay? Now what I'm interested in is just the remainder. Okay? So when you divide 72 by 16, uh, 64 is the largest multiple of 16 that can fit. Right? So I subtract 64 and what I'm left with is a remainder of 8. Is that okay? 8? So 8 is the checksum. Right? In a similar way to the parity bit, this number will get transmitted along with your actual message. Okay? But again, like the parity bit, I will recognize that this part isn't part of your message. This part is just to help me know whether the rest of the message is right or not. Okay? So, let's consider what might happen if uh, you send your message to me, but I don't get this. Suppose I get this. So, uh, one of them has been altered, okay? and you can see, obviously, when you take the sum of this, the sum will be 71. So the new remainder, sorry, there should be an 8 along here. The new remainder should be 7, right? Right, okay? So when I get this message, and I look at the end, I'm like, hold on a second, this is wrong. Your checksum doesn't match the rest of your message. Does that make sense? The checksum doesn't match the message that it's, it's, it's sending, okay? Question, yeah? So what would you call this 16? Uh, okay, um, it's, got, it's got different names, unfortunately. So, um, you'd call it the thing you divide by, it's a divisor, right? So, the parity bit works on counting. The checksum works on addition and division. Okay, that's, that's the principles, the mathematical principle in which it works. Okay? There's going to be a different kind of divisor for the next kind of check, as you'll see in a second. Okay, but that has a more technical name. Alright, now, you knew this message was wrong, okay? But just like with the parity bit, there are going to be some wrong messages that creep through, right? That you will still think are right. Can you give me an example? What would I have to do to the message? How would I have to change it to make it wrong, but still slip past the error check? Good. So it's similar to the parity check, isn't it, right? In that, this one went down by one. Well, if I increase another one by one, right, the sum will end up the same. This is still going to add up to 72, okay? So therefore, the remainder should still be 8. So even though this message is wrong, it will still get passed by the checksum check, okay? Now, this method I'm suggesting is more reliable than the parity check. Why? How can you tell? Straight away. Any take? Say that again, Peter. 
the divisor is big. Why is that crucial? Why is the size of, you're right, why is the size of the divisor important? And in fact, the bigger the, <coughs> excuse me, the bigger the divisor, the better the check. Yeah, Ricky. Ah, good. So, <clears throat> let's have a think about this one, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. The checksum, right? In our case, we got 8. What's the largest possible checksum that you could get if my divisor was 16? The largest possible checksum would be 15, right? You couldn't get 16 because then I'd be able to divide through and my remainder would be small, right? It would be 0, actually, okay? So, therefore, in this case, how many different checksum possibilities are there? Well, there's 1 through 15, okay? And there's also, if this actually added up to a multiple of 16, you could send 0 as the checksum, okay? Because there'd be a remainder 0. Therefore, there's 16 different possibilities for what the checksum should be. That means there's 15 different ones that I can know are wrong, okay? Because I know, over here, right? If this is 8, it'll be right. But if it's one to the, 0, 1, to the 4, 5, 6, 7, or 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, then all of those alternatives are wrong, okay? So more possibilities for incorrect values. So this is going to pick up more errors, okay?